them to cloud server. Hey, welcome to the virtual college exploration for all Illinois students, sponsored by the Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling and StriveScan. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see you or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at IACAC.org. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at that same website, IACAC.org. I'd now like to turn it over to our presenter, Chris Wilde from Goucher College. Thank you, Josh. And welcome everyone to the presentation tonight. Uh, thanks for tuning in to come learn a little bit more about Goucher. Uh, what I wanna focus in on today are really the things that make Goucher different. Uh, I imagine that kind of as you're going about this college search process, you're probably attending lots of these virtual sessions, you're scouring our websites, and if you're looking at a lot of small residential colleges like Goucher, we all start to sound the same after a while, um, and because we have a lot of the same features. So I really want to focus in on those things that make Goucher different uh, <clears throat> about, this about our offerings and what the college experience at Goucher looks like. Following this kind of presentation, uh, we'll definitely open it up to question and answer. So as you're listening and watching and following along with the presentation, feel free to start formulating those questions in your mind and use that Q&A feature to kind of send them in and we'll, we'll address those at the end. So uh, one of the first things I always have to talk about when I'm talking about Goucher and things that make it different is definitely location. Uh, we're kind of the rare example of a liberal arts college that is not out in the middle of a cornfield, but is in a major metropolitan area. Uh, we sit about 20 minutes north of downtown Baltimore, an hour north of Washington, D.C., right on this I-95 corridor, which is the major highway on the East Coast here, uh, giving our students easy access up and down the East Coast. Uh, Baltimore is a really great college town. Uh, there's close to 14, 15 colleges in Baltimore, about 160,000 college students. Uh, so there's a really college town vibe and feel to the city. Um, there are a lot of great opportunities to kind of connect with and engage with that, that college town network through what's called the Baltimore College Town Network. Um, and so there's ability to uh, participate in activities at other college universities. A subset of those schools are part of what's called the Baltimore Student Exchange. You can actually take classes at these other colleges and universities. Uh, and the most, probably the most popular feature of the College Town Shuttle uh, is a free shuttle service that helps get you around the city um, that's free for the college students, faculty, staff of the member institutions. And so this is a shot of downtown Baltimore, but Baltimore really is a city of neighborhoods. Uh, this is definitely going to be much more of the look and feel of the city, uh, and it really provides a great opportunity for our students in terms of you know, things to do. There's really great uh, nightlife in Baltimore, really great cultural and art scene, a really fantastic music scene, uh, but also plenty of internship opportunities, cultural sites, historical sites. And so Baltimore is a really great place to grow and explore uh, during your college experience. We sit again about 20 minutes north of downtown on 287 acres. Uh, so you get the best of both worlds. You have the residential campus experience, guaranteed housing for all four years. Um, <clears throat> And, and so you have this really kind of great ability to uh, have this physical space, this physical campus, connect and engage with your classmates, not have to worry about dodging buses and taxi cabs to get from your room to class um, and have this great campus and environment and feel. And so I've included a couple of shots here of the campus. This is our brand new first year student, or sorry, the last slide. Uh, this is our brand new first year student village. We'll talk a little bit later in the presentation. Uh, here is a shot of our brand new dining hall, Mary Fisher. Uh, and here's just kind of a shot again of the first year village as well as uh, kind of Van Meter Highway. This is the main sidewalk on campus. And these are really just gonna give you a feel for the look or give you a look at the kind of feel of the campus, what it looks like, what it feels like, uh, since unfortunately I can't walk you around campus and show it to you right now in this virtual format. Uh, we are a small campus, only about 1,400 undergraduate students, 1,400, uh, and, and classes are gonna be small. Average class sizes are about 15 to 20 students. We have an amazing 10 to one student to faculty ratio. So you really get to know your professors. Uh, they are the ones teaching the classes. It's not teaching assistants or graduate assistants, uh, reading off lectures or PowerPoints, uh, and the classes themselves are very much going to be seminar, discussion, dialogue style of classes. Uh, for a liberal arts college, Goucher is really diverse and kind of the multiple ways of looking at and assessing a college's diversity. Uh, when you look at just last year's incoming class, 61% coming out from outside the state of Maryland, California being the fifth largest state representing the student population, so very much a national, international liberal arts college. Uh, about 38% uh, students of color, so strong racial and ethnic diversity in the class. Uh, 
about 30% of the students were the first in their family to go to college, much like myself. I was the first in my family to go to college. And about 40% of the students identified under the umbrella of LGBTQIA+. And so Gaucher is a really diverse community and kind of the multiple ways of looking at and assessing a college's diversity. And that's really important for you as students. Uh, we recognize that the really the number one skill that employers are looking for in college grads is the ability to solve complex problems in groups with people who are different from yourself. And so having students who come from different backgrounds, who have different experiences, uh, all adds to your learning and those conversations in the classroom because it adds to those perspectives that are being talked about and, and being part of that conversation. Uh, one of the things that really separates Goucher apart from other liberal arts colleges is how we go about our common core curriculum. Uh, and that's because we don't subscribe to the traditional model that most liberal arts colleges follow. Most liberal arts colleges are still operating under this model we call distribution requirements, where you're required to distribute yourself amongst a bunch of different disciplines. So you have to take a science and a social science, a class in history and a class in culture. And at the, end, at the end of that experience, you've checked all the boxes, you met all the requirements, and we say, congratulations, you've done it, you are well-rounded, hooray. Most liberal arts colleges, however, fail to do the most important part, which is now that you've gotten this baseline knowledge or exposure in different disciplines, how do you apply an interdisciplinary way of thinking? How do you apply these multiple disciplines? And so we've intentionally thrown away the distribution requirements and in their place put a series of seminar classes. The first one you're gonna take is during the first semester of your first year and we call it the first year seminar. It's very creatively titled. And this is kind of that introduction to a college level seminar discussion based class. Get you used to what are the expectations, the workload, the classroom environment, kind of what to expect. Uh, but this class also serves a couple of different purposes. One is that we recognize that a majority of high schools in the United States, they have done an excellent job at killing your passion for learning. But because your entire nine through 12 experience becomes so hyper-focused on preparing for the test, that your classrooms have become these mini little test prep factories where all you do is study what's gonna be on the test and strategies for taking the test. And there's not an opportunity to deep, do a deeper dive into a topic because it sparks an interest or a sparks passion. And so we actually let you kind of pick your first year seminar class. We'll offer 25, 26 different sections. You get to rank your top three choices and we do our darndest to get you in that first choice because we want it to be a class that excites you, that it, it, it reignites that intellectual curiosity. We've offered classes on apocalyptic art as interpretation of the apocalypse, a class uh, that looked at what is free speech. Another one called Where the Wild Things Are that looks at cultural attitudes towards wilderness and nature and how they've evolved over time. Uh, genomes for jocks and docs looks to see is there some sort of connection between genetics and athleticism. And while we're getting you excited about learning, while we're rekindling that intellectual curiosity, we're doing something else that's really important. Not only are we showing you what our faculty think about, but more importantly, we're showing you how. Ultimately, our goal for you is to develop the skills to become a strong self-regulated learner so that as new things are invented, new things are created, you're able to adapt and change. Largely, our, we look at our job as preparing you for the jobs of the future. And the only thing that we know about the jobs of the future is they don't exist. We don't know anything about them yet. And so that ability to teach yourself new things is critical. And so if that's our goal for you, then we have to model what that behavior looks like. And so getting that kind of experience of how, fac how our faculty go about exploring these topics is really important in developing that skill. And in a special way, it sets you up for these complex problem exploration or these CPE classes. And these are at the heart of this new curriculum. You'll take two of them, they'll fall into a number of different categories to pick from. You'll have anywhere from eight to 10 different classes, but each one will focus in on a different complex issue, a different complex problem, and go about an interdisciplinary exploration of that issue or of that topic. Uh, to give you an example, we offered a class on immigration. And in that class on immigration, it brought in history, political science, international relations, sociology, anthropology, economics, all into that one class. There was another one called, uh, called uh, Embodying Lemonade that looked at Beyonce's album Lemonade from the perspective of her as a black feminist icon and said, let's compare this work to the works of historical and contemporary black feminist writers, authors, poets, musicians, artists, but kind of the central question being this idea of the politics of bodies. What does it mean for a woman of color to make an artistic statement? How is that looked at, viewed and interpreted by society? And so bringing in multiple disciplines to unpack and understand that idea of the politics of bodies. Uh, again, you get to take some ownership here and get to pick from those eight to 10 classes. So you really get to take control over that experience. And, uh, and, and in a special way, what we're trying to accomplish here is kind of developing that skill set uh, that employers are looking for, that ability to solve complex problems 
in groups with people who are different from yourself. We also know that there are other skills that employers are looking for, and that's where these areas of proficiency come in. For us, that's data analytics, foreign language and culture, and writing. Counters of the radical belief that every student who sets foot on our campus does not need calculus. We do, however, believe that every student needs to understand numeracy and percentages, how to analyze and interpret data, how to make decisions based on data, how to persuade based on uh, using data. Uh, and so I love this requirement. It's actually modeled after the writing requirement where you take two classes in each. The first class is a general course working on general skills, and the second one is embedded within your major. So you're seeing, how do I use data analytics? How do I use writing within my field of study, within my major, within my potential career path? So if you're ever like me and sat in the back of stats class and said, when am I ever going to use this? These second classes are showing you exactly how you're going to use them. And then as an institution, we've made commitments to two areas of justice, justice amongst people, which is the race, power, and perspective requirement, and justice amongst the natural world, which is the environmental sustainability requirement. These are not take the class, check the box, meet the requirement, but are themes you will continually encounter all throughout your time at Goucher. You'll see it in clubs that are in major, or sorry, you'll see this in uh, classes that are within majors. You'll see it in clubs and organizations, events on campus. And so these institutional commitments will kind of permeate your entire time at Goucher. As I mentioned at the top, again, small classes, active, engaging classroom uh, classrooms where you get to know your professors, you get to know the other students, seminar, dialogue, discussion style. Uh, we very much believe in the uh, active classrooms, really getting to engage uh, with the material and not just kind of listen to someone talk about the material. In addition to the core curriculum, every single student at Goucher will also pick a major. Um, we tend to attract students who have multiple interests, multiple passions, and so we have a lot of students who double major, have a major and a minor, a major and a handful of minors, uh, and, and we really celebrate and, and encourage students to, to pursue that. Uh, so we offer over 20 majors, everything from your STEM fields to your fine informing arts, a little bit of everything in between. Uh, one I always love to point out here is the individualized interdisciplinary major, which allows you to pull from existing Goucher programs to create your own major. Uh, for instance, we have a, a tour guide right now who's about to graduate who was really interested in behavioral economics. And as you can see from the list, we do not offer a behavioral economics degree. Uh, so she pulled classes from econ, from psychology, from data analytics, and created a behavioral economics degree. And so when she graduates from Goucher in May, she will have a degree in behavioral economics from Goucher College. In addition to the majors, we also offer a handful of standalone minors and concentrations. So while these can't be done as a major, these are great ways to add on to that academic experience uh, by picking up a minor, picking up a concentration, and further your, your learning and further that academic experience. One of the things that Goucher is probably most well known for uh, is the requirement that all students study abroad. Goucher became the first college in 2006, and we're still one of only two colleges in the country that require 100% of its undergraduates to have an international study abroad experience. Uh, we currently offer over 65 different programs in over 36 different countries. Asia, Africa, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, Central and South America are represented pretty much anywhere in the world except for Canada, Mexico, Antarctica, and North Korea, which is not the safest place to go. Uh, you have the option of studying abroad for either a full semester or something as short as three weeks. Semester programs are partnerships that we've established with a foreign university. So you're going to a foreign school, you're taking their classes, you're living in their housing with a host family, and very much working on things towards your major, your minor, kind of other program requirements back on campus. A couple of nice things with the semester model. One, we've already established the articulation agreement. So you don't have to worry about, oh, if I take this class over here, am I going to get credit for it? Is it going to transfer back? We've already taken care of all of that. The other nice piece is that we use what's called a home tuition model. And so we're going to apply all of the financial aid and all of the scholarships that would have been applied to your semester at Goucher to that semester abroad. And on top of that, we're going to promise you won't pay more in uh, tuition for your semester abroad than you would pay for your tuition at Goucher. So a real commitment to keeping these affordable uh, and accessible for our students. The other option is what we call the intensive course abroad, or the ICA. Intensive courses abroad are about three weeks, typically held over the summer, and are programs that are created and led by the faculty at Goucher. Uh, so in those programs, you are going with a group of Goucher students alongside of Goucher faculty in a program that that faculty member developed. Um, some really interesting options here, uh, for instance, is a program that goes to uh, France with an emphasis on theater. There's one that goes to Ghana with an emphasis on dance. Uh, there's one that goes to China that looks at how Chinese history and culture has influenced 
influenced education. Uh, my personal favorite, and it's not on the map because it's not being offered this year, it's going to be offered next year, uh, is a joint program between the business management program and the Latin American studies minor. And it's my favorite because I actually got to go on it as a staff member uh, back in 2015. And uh, so I went with 10 students and two faculty members to Cuba for three weeks in the summer of 2015. And it was this really fascinating program where in part we were going to investigate the business climate in Cuba. Uh, in 2015, they had recently transitioned to allowing Cuban citizens to, uh, owning their, to own their own businesses, to become entrepreneurs. Um, but they still maintain this really firm commitment to communism. So one of the things we wanted to go and investigate was, well, how does that work? Uh, how does introducing, introducing this capitalist idea uh, in a communist uh, country, how does that work? How does that play out? So getting to meet with different business leaders and owners to talk about their experiences. Um, you know, Are they able to make a living? Are they being taxed too much? What were the hoops they had to jump through? And at the same time, through the Latin American studies lens, getting to learn more about Cuban history, culture, uh, and doing some Spanish language practice. So a really cool and interesting program. Uh, I, I can't stress enough how different it is to be at an institution where everyone studies abroad. Um, that really changes the dynamic on campus. It changes the kinds of conversations that we're having, that things take on much more of a global perspective or a global feel um, all throughout your time at Goucher. Uh, at a lot of institutions, study abroad is this kind of like weird thing you went and did for a semester and it's kind of disconnected or disjointed from your on-campus experience uh, and so <clears throat> We've been really intentional in, in when we created the requirement in really trying to embed that global perspective or that global feel into the on-campus environment so that's something that really permeates the entirety of your Goucher experience. As I've mentioned a couple of times, you really get to take ownership over the experiences that you're having on campus, your courses, the curriculum. Uh, and so we've created a number of resources to help you as you move through your Goucher experience. Uh, every single one of our new students is assigned a professional pre-major academic advisor. Uh, these are uh, folks whose sole job it is to uh, advise incoming and new students to, up until the point that they declare a major. Once you declare a major, which you're not required to do uh, until the end of your sophomore year, uh, then you'll move into a faculty member who teaches in your field of study. Um, but up until that point, you'll work with these academic advisors and they really take the time to get to know you, your passions, your interests. And so they help you pick your first year seminar classes. They help you go through the options of the complex problem explorations, the data classes, the writing classes, and really build a schedule that's tailored to your interests and your passions. Uh, and again, again, taking that time to get to know you. Uh, for they also get to help you in, in kind of avoid common pitfalls. You know, I, I think I want to major in biology. Well, if you think you want to major in biology, you need to take Bio 101 in the first semester or you're not going to graduate on time, right? So helping our students avoid those common pitfalls of when they first get to campus. Uh, but then once you again declare, you'll move to a faculty member who is content specialist because they teach in your area. If you're out there and you're thinking, oh, I want to do the pre, I want to go pre-med, pre-health, there is a separate advisor who works with those students. Um, on that in that application process as well as in picking classes from elective standpoint they really lay that solid foundation for medical school the academic center for excellence quantitative reasoning center and the writing center serve as more generalized support resources um, these are <clears throat> really great sources quantitative reasoning center working with data analytics and mathematics writing center helping students with their writer writing uh, and then the academic center for excellence really just serving as a more general support uh, they have academic success coaches that you can meet with one-on-one -on -one. Uh, they have uh, different workshops on like time management skills and study skills. They offer peer tutoring and supplemental instruction. And so a great place to go if you need a little extra help in a class. And then Navigate is just this really great mobile application that students have access to download when they first arrive to campus. It allows you to make appointments with your professors um, as well as different offices on campus. And then also as a tool that our professors use to provide feedback throughout the semester. So as you're moving through your semester, uh, periodically throughout the, that semester, your professors will offer commentary on how you're doing in your classes. So you can that kind of real-time feedback of how you're doing in, the, in, in your courses. As I mentioned at the top, we are a residential campus. Uh, we guarantee housing for all four years, and we really expect students will live on campus for all four years. Uh, in the last five or six years, we've really been in a process of really reimagining and rethinking the physical campus experience, uh, and through renovation and new construction, have really kind of tried to zero in on creating spaces that better foster community building, dialogue, discussion. Uh, and so one of the first things we built was this first year student village, uh, which was specifically designed with our first year students in mind. I'll talk about that in a second, uh, as well as our Mary Fisher 
dining center, moving dining into the heart of our campus. Um, in terms of things to do outside the classroom, uh, there's the Center for Race, Equi Equity, and Identity, which works with students from marginalized and underrepresented backgrounds, so students of color, first-generation college students, Pell-eligible students, uh, international students, LGBTQA students. Um, and so they are, there are support staff members there who help, help those students and offer resources to them. There are a number of uh, affinity and cultural identity groups uh, that students can get engaged and be part of as well. Uh, and they also provide general programming for the campus that all members of the community can participate and engage with. Additionally, there are over 60 different clubs and organizations that run a wide range of themes, uh, clubs that are based around causes, social movements, political movements, clubs based around majors, shared interests. Uh, one of my personal favorites is the group Humans vs. Zombies, uh, which is this giant game of tag involving Nerf guns that was created by Goucher students in 2005. Uh, don't let any other college tell you differently. It was original. It is original to Goucher. Uh, essentially, it's this giant game of tag where everyone that wants to play signs up. One person at random is chosen to be the original zombie, and if you go around tagging humans, converting them into zombies, um, the game is played out over the course of an entire week. Uh, so it is a very strategic game. Each side has different missions to fulfill throughout the week. Um, humans get to be equipped with Nerf guns, so you can shoot a zombie with a Nerf gun, it stuns them for a few moments, allowing you to make your escape. Uh, the manager of the Target in town says that they sell more Nerf guns than any Target in the state of Maryland. So a very popular pastime uh, and a really great long-standing Goucher tradition. Uh, the student engagement team is a group of student leaders who plan social activities on campus, things like comedians, bands, magicians, movie nights, ice cream, socials, dances. Um, and they typically have something going Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, and Sunday afternoon. Uh, we have a really robust recreation and wellness office that plans things like club sports and intramural sports, as well as hosts fitness classes. Um, so this is a shot of our first year student village. And as I mentioned before, this was really designed again with first year students in mind. It was designed to provide for our first year students the thing that is most critical to your success in college, friends. Turns out that get making friends, getting engaged, building that social support network is critical to your success. And so we wanted to create spaces that create opportunities for interaction, kind of loose structures or gentle nudges that might offer a chance for a conversation. Are you gonna sign up for Humans versus Zombies? Are you gonna go see that speaker tonight? Are you gonna go see the dancer side of the see lacrosse match? Um, and just comfort spaces all throughout campus, all throughout the, the buildings. Um, every room is a double, and so you only have one other roommate in the first year student village, and every room comes with a bed, a desk, a dresser, and a closet for each person that lives in the room. Uh, this is a shot of the brand new Mary Fisher Dining Center. We relocated dining into the heart of our campus, right really in the center of campus, and brought our diverse dining options all into one space. So if you keep kosher or if you have certain dietary restrictions or preferences, uh, you don't have to be in a separate space from students who don't share those preferences or, or religious observations. All of that can be available in the same space and you can share a meal together um, while still being able to stick to your dietary needs. Uh, this here in the shot of Kraft, are uh, probably the most popular station uh, in the new dining center. This is the Create Your Own Stir Fry Bar. Uh, it's open for dinner every night. Uh, and so there's a big smorgasbord of toppings. You fill a bowl with all of your favorite things. You hand it over to the chef. He throws it on this giant Mongolian grill, fries it up, and then you get fresh stir fry. Um, the food at Goucher is fantastic. We ranked as high as 19th in the nation for food. Uh, that's because it's done by an outside company called Bon Appetit, which is really into environmental and agricultural sustainability. So farm to table food, food, fresh foods, coming to campus, not kind of frozen chicken tenders shipped in from halfway across the country or something, uh, but really coming from local areas. Uh, this is a shot of Gig, uh, one of Goucher's oldest traditions, get into Goucher Day. Uh, this is a giant spring festival where on a Friday afternoon in May, classes are canceled from noon on. Uh, there's a giant community picnic, live music, uh, moon bounces, food trucks, uh, just a really great day to come together as a Goucher, as a community, uh, celebrate the spring, the beautiful spring weather that we have in, ba in Baltimore in April, uh, and just again, come together as a community. We have events all throughout the year. Um, this is an example of a voter registration drive we did four years ago, where you could get cotton candy and snow cones and screen print a t-shirt and then also register to vote. Um, so events again, happening all throughout the year. Uh, this is the, uh, uh, Glass Studio that's part of that first year student village. And so this is where the fitness classes that are hosted by the Recreation and Wellness Offices are housed. In addition, we are an NCAA Division III institution. We offer both men's and women's sports, uh, 20 teams. I really love being at a D3 school because there is that recognition of student athletes, student being that primary responsibility, uh, and particularly enjoy the conference that we're in the landmark conference because it is a conference of similar size schools. And so, um, 
you know, we're not a doormat for a, a D3 division with much larger institutions who have deeper rosters and are throwing more money at athletics. Um, we get to be competitive. Our men's tennis team, for instance, four feet at the conference championship golf has won our conference championship three, three times now, and actually won in their first year of existence. We've had a history of success in lacrosse, soccer, and basketball in both men's and women's sports. And so a really great way to add to that collegiate experience and continue to develop those skills uh, that we know sports are able to provide for students. In addition to the Division Three teams, we also have a varsity equestrian program that is a part of the IHSA, the Intercollegiate Horse Show Association. And the cool thing with this is that the riding facilities and the stables are actually on campus. So the college owns 28 and a half horses. Yes, I said half because there is a mini horse named Cookie who is there to help socialize new horses as they're donated to the campus. Uh, the equestrian team is com in very competitive. They place in the top 10 in the nation every year that I've been at Goucher. Uh, they've also, um, twice in my time at the national champion rider and so a very competitive team the cool thing though is even if you're not on the varsity equestrian program you can actually take horseback riding classes it counts as a gym class and you can do it for credit uh we'll to talk just a little bit about what our graduates are up to after uh they they leave the campus um and you're probably sitting there going i haven't even applied yet why are you talking about this and it's because college is an investment it really should be really should look at college as an investment you're investing in yourself you're investing time money energy and effort into this experience and at the end of that you want to get a job you want to get into grad school um and so i'm happy to tell you that for the last five graduating classes 96 percent of the grads have been employed or in grad school uh, on average within one year of graduation and so they're seeing that immediate return on their investment when you look at just some of the places our students have gone on to graduate school a really nice mix of institutions here names i'm sure that you recognize uh, one of the things that i always love to point out is the number of international universities that appear on this list um, i think again that commitment to global education the study abroad experience our students want to go back abroad for their grad school experience in terms of employment, here's some places our students have gone on to recently. Uh, again, a nice diverse mix of organizations here and, and institutional types. Uh, one of the things I always love to point out, though, is that a large number of our students choose to commit to long-term service work and do something like Teach for America or the Peace Corps um, uh, once they graduate before jumping into the workforce or before pursuing graduate school. So committing to that kind of long-term service work. But coming to a place like Goucher isn't just a short-term return on your investment. Uh, there really is a long-term effect on your earning potential and, and outcomes. Uh, there was a really great study done by Georgetown's University Center on Education and the Workforce that looked at what was the return on investment of a bachelor's degree from institutions across the United States. We were very excited to find out that we actually rank in the top 20% of all colleges nationwide in terms of that lifetime return on investment that 40 years after graduation, our students are making close to a million dollars in what they call net present value, uh, which is essentially a way of saying how much a sum of money in the future is worth right now. So a million dollars in today's money. And that's because of the focus on developing you as critical thinkers and, and, uh, and communicators, the ability to be that strong self regulated learner to be able to tackle the jobs of the future, that it really does create those opportunities for our students for a long-term success, a long-term return on that investment. So hopefully I've gotten you a little excited about uh, the opportunities that Goucher offers. And I want to touch just briefly on the admissions and financial aid process before kicking it over to Q&A uh, and, and wrapping up for the night. Um, and so there's two ways to apply to Goucher. We are a member of the Common Application and we also have our own application we call the Goucher Video App. Um, so I'll, start about, I'll talk about the Common App first. So the Common App is a more traditional application. Uh, it allows you or gives you the ability to apply to over 500 different colleges and universities all throughout the United States and around the world. Uh, and so you complete the Common Application, you write the essay that's part of the Common App, you submit a high school transcript, a letter of recommendation from a counselor and a teacher, and that comprises your application. Talk about test scores in a minute. The other option is the Goucher video application or the GVA as we like to call it. And this is an app that you can only use to apply to Goucher. And rather than the traditional materials of, of the Common App, it's a little bit of an alternative option. Uh, and so what you do is you can complete a much shorter application. And as kind of the sole big pieces of the application, you one is you create a video that uh, kind of no longer than two minutes that answers the question, how do you see yourself flourishing in Goucher? It's low key a two part question. Uh, it's asking you, what are you passionate about? What are you interested in? And how do you see those passions and interests aligning with the college? Uh, and then in lieu of a high school transcript and an essay, you're submitting graded, uh, graded right, grading, excuse me, graded works from school. Uh, the first piece needs to be a graded writing assignment. So that was turned in for a class, returned to you as a teacher's grades and comments on it. 
uh, and the second piece can come from any discipline. Uh, and you want it to be a piece of work that demonstrates the quality of work you would be capable of producing as a student of the college. And so you want it to be something substantial. You don't want it to be kind of a worksheet you turn in for a class. It should be, uh, you know, maybe a, a piece of literary analysis, historical research, a lab report, something with substance that really shows off your skills as a student. Uh, but that's it. No, no transcript, no letters of recommendation, no essay, just the short application, the video, and the two works from school. Um, so a really different alternative to the Common App. Either is fine. Uh, we want you to choose which application you are most comfortable with. If you are like me and you are not a big fan of being on video, maybe the Goucher video application is not the right choice for you. Um, to be kind of fully transparent, we get a little over 3,000 applications to the college every year, and only about 50 to 60 of them are the Goucher video app. And so we clearly do not have a preference that we want students to use our application. Uh, again, we want you to use whatever you are most comfortable with. For both applications, we are test optional. Uh, we do not require the submission of SAT or ACT scores, either for consideration for admission or consideration for merit scholarships. And so depending on where you fall in the process, we recognize that for this year's seniors, you might not have the ability to take the test. Uh, and that is okay. You might not, have, maybe you have taken it and you weren't happy with your scores and you wanted to retake it. And you're not gonna have a chance to retake it. That is okay. You do not have to submit your test scores to Goucher and it will not have a negative impact, uh, or sorry, it will not have a negative impact on your application or admissions chances uh, if you choose not to submit test scores. So we are truly test optional. Here's my advice. For the SAT, our middle 50%, so we're kind of the middle chunk of the class that's admitted sits, is usually between 1100 and 1300, looking at the evidence-based reading and writing section and the math section. If you fall within that range or you are above that range, I would encourage you to submit your scores. They, have, they are not gonna have a negative impact on you. Uh, they will be fine to submit. For the ACT, if you sit between 23 or 29 on the composite score, or are above that, that's what the middle 50% is. So if you sit within that 23 to 29 or you are above that, I would encourage you to submit your scores. If for either the SAT or the ACT, you fall below those middle 50%, keep your scores to yourself. I don't wanna see them. They could have the most potential to do harm when they're in that bottom 25%. Um, so think about uh, how you wanna uh, use your test scores if you have test scores to submit. And for both applications, we do not require an application fee because we think it's ludicrous that colleges charge 50, 60, 80, $100 just to apply. Uh, here are the deadlines. The common application, we offer two deadlines, early action and regular decision. Both of these are non-binding, meaning that you're not committing to Goucher with the application. You're not saying, if I'm, a, if I'm admitted, I'm coming. Um, you have that flexibility. You have the option to wait all the way until May 1st to make your final decision. Uh, the early action deadline, December 1st, regular decision, January 15th. Um, for both uh, early action regular decision on the common application, we use what we call rolling notification, which means as soon as your application is in, it's completed, it will be reviewed and you'll hear from us within two to three weeks. So the, the decision notification date in that middle section is really just kind of a final date that you would hear back from us. Uh, but if your application is in in September and it's complete, it will be reviewed and you'll hear from us in two to three weeks. Um, so there's something to note with the Common App. For the Goucher video application, there's just one deadline, December 1st. Uh, and because this, pro and this is also a non-binding entrance plan, so you're not, again, not committing to Goucher, uh, you have that flexibility to make the final decision all the way up until May 1st. Um, because the video application also involves faculty re uh, review of application, uh, the just February 1st decision notification deadline is a hard deadline. You will hear from us on February 1st. We release all of those decisions at once. And again, you have until May 1st to make that final decision. Every admitted student who sends a transcript to Goucher is automatically considered for a merit scholarship. So you might remember the video application does not require a high school transcript. And so if you are admitted to uh, through the video application and you want to be considered for a merit scholarship, we'll ask you to send in your transcript after the fact and we'll review it for a scholarship. Um, so automatically considered. Uh, these will range anywhere from $11,000 a year all the way up to $35,000 a year. And this is a four year renewable scholarship. So if you earn it as a first year student, you are able to maintain that for all eight semesters. All all that we ask is that you continue to make progress towards your degree, so maintain full-time status, keep taking classes, and that you maintain a 2.0 GPA. So we're not asking a lot. This is not a bait and switch. We're not saying here's a $35,000 scholarship. Also, you need to maintain a 4.0 to keep it. It really is an award for the work that you've accomplished in high school, and so we want you to have that award for your four years or eight semesters at Goucher. In addition to merit scholarships, we also offer need-based financial aid. That will be a kind of 
through the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid. Uh, that just became available on October 1st if you're a senior this year. Uh, and if you're not a senior this year, it'll come available on October 1st of your senior year. Um, that's all the only application we require for an e-based aid. We don't require the CSS profile. We don't have a separate application just for Goucher. Um, you just need to submit the FAFSA. The good news is 97% of the students receive some sort of institutional aid from the college, which is usually some combination of gift and self-help aid. When you look at just the gift aid, so this is scholarships and grants, the free money, the money doesn't have to be paid back, the average is a little over $31,000 a year. When you add in the self-help aid, so things like federal loans or work studies, something that requires repayment or effort, uh, the number gets up closer to $38,000 a year. So you can see the vast majority of Goucher's financial aid package is coming in the form of the free money. The money doesn't have to be paid back. Uh, and that is because we are committed to being an affordable and accessible institution and not overly burdening our students with loan debt. Um, we are incredibly proud of the experience that we offer here at Goucher, uh, and we're not the only ones that think we're doing good stuff. We have been recognized by a number of organizations uh, for the kind of experience we provide for our students. One of the ones that I'm most proud of is being named one of the most innovative liberal arts colleges uh, by U.S. News and World Report, because that is actually voted on by presidents and vice presidents of other colleges and universities. So it's other folks who work in colleges and universities looking at the work that we're doing here at Goucher and saying they're really cutting edge. They're really at the top. Uh, kind of at the, the cutting edge of, of new new ways of thinking about what a liberal arts college experience looks like. Um, and so with that, I will close uh, and ask to see what questions you have. Uh, and I see we have one here in the Q&A already. Uh, question from Aya Alyssa. Do you meet 100% of financial need? What kind of student is the most successful at Goucher? These are great questions. Uh, Goucher does not meet 100% of financial need. Uh, we work very hard, our financial aid team works very hard in looking through uh, each individual student's circumstances and offering the best financial aid package that we can offer. Uh, but unfortunately, we do not have the resources to meet 100% of need, uh, but we will work very hard to meet as much of that need as possible and do so without, again, overly burdening our students with loans. Um, as part of their financial aid package um, and, and also ensure that we're distributing the resources that we do have in an equitable manner across our entire applicant admitted applicant pool. Uh, what kinds of students are most successful at Goucher? Uh, from a profile standpoint, you know, typically our middle 50% for GPA on a 4.0 unweighted scale is between a 2.8 and a 3.2. Um, so kind of a B plus, A minus average. Um, in term, I've talked about test scores, but again, SET 1100 to 1300, ACT 2329. Um, so those are kind of the academic stats um, that we see. Uh, in terms of what we see in our students, um, in terms of characteristics or things that kind of our students have in common, uh, they tend to be a very passionate bunch. Uh, they have things that they're passionate about and interested in and want to get, engage with. Um, and so they bring those passions with them to campus and, and actively engage in them. Uh, they definitely have a mind for social justice. Uh, there is a real commitment amongst our students and as a campus to issues of equity and inclusion. Uh, and so we see that in, in, through our students, but also through the college itself. And then uh, definitely students who are globally curious or globally minded, they want to explore the world, they want those opportunities. Um, so students who have those kind of character traits tend to do really well at Goucher. Other questions, other things I can tell you about the college? You are welcome, Alyssa. Wait just a second longer here, see if anyone has any questions. All right, well, seeing none, uh, I just want to thank you all for tuning in and learning a little bit more about Goucher College. It's always great when I get to share the kind of awesome things that we're offering for our students. Um, if you have any questions as you move through the admissions process, uh, please feel free to go on our website, go to the Meet the Staff page, my face, my email, uh, my number to text me on is all listed there. So feel free to reach out to me. I am the counselor at Goucher who works with all students and all high school counselors and schools in Illinois. Um, so if you do have questions, please reach out to me. I'm happy to be of assistance. Um, there's also a really great feature on our website, uh, Ask a Goucher Student. Uh, you create a little profile that you can actually chat directly with our students uh, through our website. So that's a great way if you want to connect with Goucher students, learn a little bit more about their experience and kind of what, what it's like to be uh, at Goucher and taking our classes, working with our faculty, engaging in life outside the classroom. Um, that is a really, really great resource. But uh, then, uh, excuse me, again, I just want to thank everyone for tuning in. And I will turn it over back over to Josh to close us out for the night.
Awesome. Thank you so much, Chris. And thank you, everyone um, who came to participate today. Oops. All right, thank you for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this was just one of many sessions being hosted. So be sure to sign up for additional sessions at IACAC.org. In about one week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at IACAC.org. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great night. Hey, well. Josh. Chris.